Funding for this program was provided by Friends, the Iowa Public Television Foundation. AARP Iowa, reminding voters of the importance of understanding each presidential candidate's position on Social Security. More information is available at 2016takeastand.org. Previously on Caucus Countdown. The first six months of the campaign began a traditional caucus cycle as Governor Jeb Bush became the early frontrunner on the national stage as Governor Scott Walker shot to the front of the polls in Iowa. But by late July, the summer of Donald Trump had taken hold and he began a rise to the top spot in national polls. Is that appropriate? in running for president. Okay, uh, let's, you gotta let me speak though, Frank, because you right. interrupt all the time, okay? So, he's not a, a war hero. He's a war hero. He's a war Five hero. and a half years. He's a, a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? I hate to tell you. When the New York billionaire criticized Senator John McCain's war hero status, candidates like Scott Walker and Rick Perry went on the attack. Donald Trump spitting every one of their oaths. Others, like Senator Ted Cruz, ignored Trump and set out to target Iowa evangelicals. A dozen other campaigns were still trying to find their footing. On the Democratic side, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders was campaigning as a political outsider, with significant momentum against former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and former Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley. The stage was set for the next chapter of the caucus campaign, the busiest fried food extravaganza in politics, the quintessential icon of rural America, the Iowa State Fair. It's where we begin our journey on this edition of Caucus Countdown. The Iowa State Fair is the ultimate political test of media relations, photo ops, speeches, encounters with protesters, and everyday Iowans. And it's all under the watchful eyes of dozens of media from across the nation. Iowa voters are very savvy. They actually do a real service to the people of America because what they do is they sift through the candidates. They ask tough questions. They're not starstruck just because somebody's running for president. So you don't go into a room and have people falling all over themselves with deference. You have people who will ask you very difficult questions. They'll push back on your answers if they don't think you were honest with them. And quite frankly, I think that any person who's going to be president ought to have to answer some hard questions. Why don't you say something good once in a while about Obama instead of Andrew? Well, let's we'll see. Because I realize that maybe you don't yeah. agree with it. That would be a fair but, statement. But I mean, it's just kind of gotten ridiculous because you can't even agree with a U.S. citizen by Now, wait a minute. When have I ever said that? Well, I'm not saying you. I'm oh, saying the, okay. a lot I'm of the crowd. Because I'm going to say, gee, that's not something crowd. I've ever done. <laughs> Come on. I mean, I just get Cut me my, some slack. But tell, give me one thing he's a good, positive. He's a good husband, a good father. Okay. You did it. There you go. You're, you're a good man. Thank I you. Really I try. I do. Yeah, you pick them up. We can you know, let them no, hold me. Go like this. Ah. Just roll them over like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, these are done. You use charcoal or wood? No, this is gas. Oh, gas. We used to use charcoal. It's what's for dinner. And breakfast. Well, yeah. Breakfast, <laughs> lunch, dinner, <laughs> snack. It's the other white meat, Kay. Okay? Come on. You know that. Be inspired. Be inspired. I've done this before. <laughs> A year or two. How long have you been doing it? It's my 22nd year. 22nd. Sorry. <laughs> Melts in your mouth, not in your hands. Sorry, if I get to the White House, you get to be ambassador to the country of your choice. I'll be there. <laughs> if you were going to enter any one of the contests at the State Fair, what would it be? It would be the pork chop eating contest, because I'm pretty sure I'd win that uh, teeth down. <laughs> Thank you. Let me ask you one quick news update okay. question on the Iran deal. Uh, Ted Cruz has said that the deal amounts to funding terrorists. Do you agree with that assessment? Well, I agree with what I've been saying all along, that what this is, this is arming Iran to go after both Israel and the United States. They have 
have done more to sponsor terrorism across the world with Hamas and Hezbollah than anybody. And giving the money is just, uh, it's like giving whiskey and car keys to a 16-year-old. This is a good opportunity in politics. You know it is. Uh, I mean, I'm going to go do the soapbox, but a lot of the fun is just realizing this is America. I mean, this is where people come because every now and then they need to get away from the pressures and the problems they have. And you come to the state fair and you get, you know, a snow cone, a corn dog, a pork chop on a stick, uh, ten things that are fried, and the next thing you know, your stomach ache is making it so you don't care about the world's problems anymore. So where's my family? They're right here. Family. Are you from Maryland? I am. I lived in Virginia up until three months ago. Uh, how about that? Yeah. yeah, I'm the former governor of Maryland. I know. I served two terms there. I know. And now I'm running for president. So I'm, Good luck. I'm seeing all of your beautiful state. <laughs> thank you. People, people have been very nice to me. Well, it's an honor to have you here. Hey, thank you. This is my daughter, Grace. Hi, hi Grace. Hi. Hi. Hey, hi. These folks are from Dubuque. This is William. William. It takes uh, one person at a time, one living room at a time, one restaurant at a time, the Iowa way. There's uh, uh, people with networks and families all across the state, and they expect to see each of the presidential candidates two and three and four times. And that's what I intend to do, putting forward the ideas that serve our country. Can you tell me your last name, Ed? Uh, Ed Fallon. Fallon. And when did you run? I ran in 06. Um, ah, I, I was running that year, too. Yeah, you were, yeah. <laughs> so you were in a primary with Chet? Ted that year? Culver, good uh, article on... Or the video on having good pose. I told him afterwards, I said, I don't wear dad jeans. Yeah. <laughs> Have you met my daughter, Grace? No, uh, Martin O'Malley. Good to see you, Bob. This is the State the Fair. Oh, yeah. So I'm this guy. I'm a Democrat running for president. How are you doing, Matt? Nice. Good to see you. What's your name? I'm so glad you're here. Hey, good to see you. Shake nice your hand. to have you here, sir. Are you good drumming up some votes? I am. I, will you caucus for me? I would love to do that. As long as you have the, uh, the, the side of the robotics, the technology people are talking for you, right? Absolutely. Well, excellent. Now, what kind of technology experience do you have, sir? I, I have all sorts of technology experience, mostly in campaigns. Probably. I'm from Maryland. Maryland. Yes, ma'am. Well, welcome to Iowa. You, everyone gets the opportunity to meet each of the candidates at a time when big money's taking over our politics. Here in Iowa, the individual voter makes a big, big difference, and I think that's important for the whole country. So how many trips is this week? I don't know. I'm usually here every other week okay. for a few days. They usually do it in three-day stretches. So it's a rare week when I'm not spending three days in Iowa. Okay. All right, are we going to get food? Yeah, we'll have some food. What's you next? Do you want before you speak? I wouldn't mind. Yeah. I mean, we'll do it. Yeah, can I get a pork chop on the stick? Is this it? That's it. This is just the butter cow. Dad, you're going to take a selfie for us. Yeah, we sure are. Try it. a little short. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's one. Speaking of summer of anger, does any of this Donald Trump phenomenon um, rub off into the Democratic Party as well? I mean, voters of all stripes are angry at what's happened in Washington, and you're an establishment politician. Uh, is that a problem? Well, no, I've never two really considered governor, two term mayor. Well, that's true, and I've been successful both as a big city mayor and a and the governor during a recession. I'm not sure that I'd, you'd necessarily call me establishment. I'm not bound to the old perspectives or the old relationships of the past. I represent a new generation, and I have the independence to actually lead our country forward. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I've heard all sorts of things about your pork chop on a stick. It's the best around. It's, it's fame has spread to the, <laughs> to the eastern shore of Maryland. Well, we like to hear that. Yeah, it's the best pork chop on a stick I've ever had. Can I get uh, three for the slide? Those kids look of terror. What's the record of a number of, of hands shaken in a uh, four and a half hour period? <laughs> I'm trying to break it. <laughs> You'll do it today. You'll do it today. Yeah. Welcome to the state fair. You've probably been here before. I have. I was remind. I was. I was here in, in high school. I, well, right? no. I was. Uh, you were running for the United States Senate, and I was. Uh, yeah. A twenty-something kid okay. trying to help my uh, my 
dad, who was an asterisk. Yeah. Yeah. About this time, yeah. Yeah. about yeah. this time that summer, he was like one percent of the polls. Yeah. <laughs> what year is this for? Seventy-two Pontiac. What were you doing in nineteen seventy-two? Nineteen seventy-two. I was raising hell. <laughs> I was out of high school and having fun. Here's the good news. The good news is the statute of limitations is running. <laughs> I grew up, too. Yeah, exactly. We all do. <laughs> nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. This looks like it came from Cuba. Huh? I like looking at them. I can't, I don't have time to maintain them and treat them with the respect they deserve. This takes a lot of time and effort, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Oh, yeah. I'm that old. <laughs> These youngsters, have, they've never even seen a stick shift, I don't think. <laughs> My first car was uh, a VW bus that uh, I got from a friend for like $400 before it died. Polls suggest voters are looking for an outsider. Are you a plausible outsider? Yeah, I haven't been in Washington, D.C. I wouldn't know how to drive. I can barely get from Dulles to... Uh, Senator Grassley's office. I think I could probably get there with GPS. I mean, I, I've never lived there, never been, I've been a reform-minded governor. I'll tell that story. There's a yearning, you're, hey, I got that, I got the family thing. That's, that's definitely you're, you're true, but look. You're a family of insiders. I got, I got, I'm blessed with, uh, with a great family, but my record of success is something people yearn for in Washington, D.C. Yeah. Red, you to have his 41 talk about your dad. Oh, that was nice. Great, dog. Your dad was a heck of a guy. He, he still, still is. is. He still not, is. He's still hanging in there. I know. I, I can actually see real people kind of <laughs> over the horizon. Good, good. At some point, I'm sure people will be tired of surrounding me and not allowing me to actually interrelate with people, but that's that's probably a little later on when the sun comes up. We're going to wear them out, maybe. I don't know. Is this a goofy enough picture for you guys? How are you going to help? A, I'm, a, I'm a peacock farmer. A peacock farmer? Yes, and I'm leading one in the country. How are you going to help me get back what we've lost back in the last seven and a half years, if I vote for you? Well, we're going to create high sustained growth, for starters. But, it, but you got to help people like us. Absolutely. Where's your, where's your, where's your, uh, where's your farm? Where? Minden, Iowa. Come see me. I'd love to see a peacock Western farm. Western Iowa. Yeah, Nobody comes to Western Iowa, so come to Minden, Iowa. Oh, what a pick! 44 miles an hour. Governor, is it time for a corn dog? Not, no, I'm not doing the corn dog in front of you guys. That's, that's one of my rules. How are we doing? Vote for the next president. Uh, no. <laughs> okay. That's just, this is not like running for class president where you vote for your opponent. There are a lot in the Trump jar. Why do you sure. think that is? We'll find out later. This is the long haul, man. Slow, steady progress. Ask me in December, and then ask me in January. By yeah. going more in, in Iraq, will we be welcomed as liberators again or not? The question, I, I assume everybody heard it. Right now we have 3,500 soldiers and Marines in Iraq already. We have no strategy, we just, it kind of creeps up. We're responding incrementally to the challenges that exist rather than having a strategy. I would take the advice of the commanders in the field. And what I've heard from the advisors is, first of all, the Iraqis want our help. They want to know that we have skin in the game, that we're committed to this. We don't we have to- We had to get out in 2011. Excuse me? We had to get out in 2011. We didn't have to get out in 2011. Your brother signed the deal. It could have been modified, and that was the expectation. Everybody in Iraq and everybody in Washington knew that this deal could have been expanded. And now what we need to do... A bad deal? Now, now we need to do something else, which is to deal with the fact that we have Islamic terrorists organized as a caliphate, and the way that you take them out is to rebuild the Iraqi military. But two buds, two regulars. Good job this morning. Was it good? Yeah. Yeah, last night, too. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers. Yeah. Woo! You got to take him He and his uh, brothers and his mother and father beat my friend Ronald Reagan because they went to every county and Reagan did one rally for the congressional district. And how durable do you think the Donald Wells Well, it's hard to say. Uh, you know, it's, it's a phenomenon, but whether it's going to last is another question. And from everything from the municipalities to the uh, business community, to the agricultural groups. To the this is the same EPA that now is 
possibly threatening the water supply of Las Vegas. That I think they're going to want to take those off the grill before they burn there. Okay. <laughs> we got, where's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the pork chop, little hot sauce. At this tent, we serve pork as pork is, not, what, what, I, not what you can make it into. I said it with some trepidation for that very reason. Yeah. That's, no, I mean, how you know, do you eat pork every, for everybody has their own flavor. Just I, about every day at the <laughs> Iowa State Fair. But yeah, a little I, bacon doesn't hurt. This pork is pork the best. Pork There's a lot of great food here, but you cannot beat pork chop on the stick. We finished? Yes, sir. You're, You're kidding. You're outstanding. Yeah. Hatch was wondering where I'm ready to go. Let's go shake a few more hands. Hatch was where it's waiting for more gas. Could you repeat that, Kay? Did you lock in Harkins and Dorsen now because you're afraid that he might remain neutral if Vice President Biden and former Vice President Gore get the race? I'm just wondering how the timing of the Harkins. Timing? I don't know about timing. As I said, Kay, I've been on a lot of trips with my grandkids this summer. <laughs> And I, I've spent the entire month of July working on the 25th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act, uh, in which we've had a lot of great events surrounding that. So that, that just occupied a lot of my time. And so what better time than Iowa State Fair time? <laughs> Why are you and Donald Trump the only two skipping the show? <laughs> Secretary Clinton, have you had any conversations with Joe Biden? Sure. Sure. I'm a government teacher, so oh. this will give me great street cred. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so for much. teaching I government. You. I appreciate Say all hello you've to done. Tom Harkin. Hi. Hi. What's your name? It's Shannon Ross. Where are you from, Shannon? I'm actually, I grew up in Iowa, but I've moved to Virginia. I teach in the Shenandoah Valley now. Oh, beautiful. Oh, Virginia. Virginia. That's there. That's oh, wow. Yeah, it is. She teaches well, government. You. Oh, yeah. you must you. Hi. She and I used to run little potlucks together uh, when we were living in Fayetteville. And we would have people over to where I was living or where she was living, and we'd have these little potlucks. It was like something that she brought with her from Iowa to Arkansas back to Iowa. Thanks. Everybody's backing up. Everybody's backing up. Thank you so much. You bet, My friends are school. Oh, man, they're about to be done. Okay. Stick around for a few more minutes, my wife said. I told her Hillary to be out there. She said, I'll let Rick stay here. <laughs> Why is she out there? Yeah. Okay. Am I holding her up? Just it's going to be very exciting for the kids, and I know the kids are going to go up. We have quite a few children going to take rides today. So, where are the children? They're off to the side. Get them over here. That's great. What? Nobody else will do the job that I will do. I will bring back jobs. I will strengthen our military. I'll take care of our vets. I'll get rid of Obamacare, which is, by the way, a catastrophe. Look at what's happening with your. No, look what's happening. Look what's happening. The cost of your insurance is going through the roof. That's what, let's give them a helicopter ride, okay? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Keep it up, guys! 
Keep it up! You're the man! He's got some great voice. You're the man, though! No. Do you think that most people here will vote for you? Yes, actually caucus for well, you? Well, we're leading in the polls by a lot, and I do believe so, yes. What I, think, I think you believe it too, don't you? Are, are you going to have anything to eat here at the state? I am. Try some fried food. You take me to fried foods, and that's my favorite kind of thing. I don't think I have to do anything. The voters know I love them. The voters know that I want to turn this whole country around and make it great again. We are a country in serious trouble. We are going to make it great again. I can't guarantee that, but the racing In fans love you. The Knoxville Raceway. It's the Knoxville National. It's the largest sprint race in the world. Bring the kids here. So, come on, kids. Let's go. Get back, please. Look out. That will be your soapbox this time. Straight ahead where the white tents are. We got Gwen Ives on the left. We are in Iowa, and you see what's around you here. Is this something you expected? There are a lot of people here, and thank you all very much for being here. You know, we are seeing working people coming out, elderly coming out, young people, African Americans coming out, Hispanics coming out. And you're right in saying that it's one thing to bring 28,000 people out in Los Angeles, it's another thing to convert that into a political operation. That's true. We have in the, this campaign is going so fast, it's exploding so fast, that our infrastructure can't even keep up with the growth. But what we have done in the last month is hired dozens of people right here in Iowa, uh, and we're going to hire more. Latinos and African Americans and people of color and girls. Yes. And they're profiting. That's right, why the gentleman asked me an interesting call. question, whether we are going to shut down corporations who are profiteering yeah. off of people going to jail. And you know what the answer yeah. is? C. Yes. Feel out words! Feel out words! Feel out words! Excited to eat anything fried? Oh, yeah. Am I excited about Well, we eat this stuff all the time in Vermont, so it's not. Looks to be like the same event. <laughs> and let me repeat a promise that I have made to other crowds, and that is no nominee of mine to the Supreme Court will get that position unless he or she pledges to make certain that Citizens United is overturned. <laughs> to transform our energy system, well, there's Donald Trump. What can we do? You know, I apologize. We left the helicopter at home. Now, this is the richest country in the history of the world. But most people don't know that because almost all of the wealth and much of the income is going to the top 1%. So let me be frank. If you are a billionaire in this country, if you are a millionaire in this country, if you are a large corporation that today is making billions and paying nothing in taxes, you know what, under President Sanders, you are going to start having to pay your fair share of taxes. Would That's you welcome Vice President Biden into this race? I have known Joe Biden for decades. He is a very decent guy. He is a friend of mine. If he gets in, that's great. If he doesn't get in, that's great. That's his decision. If he gets in, I look forward to an issue-oriented campaign. Hello. Hi. Hi. Ruth here, please. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Whoa. See, my shirt is not. <laughs> you don't know how to go <laughs>
And I expected it to be fried pizza. <laughs> I'm a huge fan. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm a root beer fan. Nothing like root beer. <laughs> it's the only beer that I drink. <laughs> and that we're going to have to start thinking about those things that are anti-American and pro-American, not things that are anti-Democrat or anti-Republican, uh, because that's destroying us. Well, you're doing a good job. Thank you. We Thanks appreciate so you guys. Thanks. Appreciate you very much. So, oh, I, I love this, where you have yeah. the actual yeah. sizes. We of have the, the actual sizes um, from seven weeks to ten weeks. Is there something particular about Iowa you think that, that makes it that the non-politicians are doing really well here? Well, in Iowa, the people are much more politically attuned, uh, so they pay much closer attention. And uh, I think it's a, a very good bellwether. Yeah. And I think other people will start paying attention to this is, this is quite a fair, yeah. I must admit. I've been to some state fairs, but I don't think any that rivals this. Call the baby for a picture! <laughs> Do you think this, the ideas that Donald Trump is putting forward on immigration are plausible? Are they doable? You've had to make decisions as an executive. Well, again, I'll let, I'll let Donald Trump and the others talk about their specifics. We've laid out plans there. We're going to lay out more tomorrow about how we plan on repealing Obamacare, which I still think. There's a lot of people that talk tough. I'm the only one who stood up to 100,000 protesters, stood up to the big union bosses. I'll stand up to Washington, regardless of party, and fight for the American people. Unintimidated. I am not intimidated by you, sir, or anyone else out there. I will fight for the American people over and over and over and over again. You want someone who's tested? I'm right here. You can see it. This is what happened in Wisconsin. We will not back down. We will do what is necessary to defend the American people going forward. God bless you. Thanks to all of our veterans. Uh, but in terms of going forward, I'm going to support a legal immigration system that puts a priority on the impact on American working families and their wages. And Governor, I all the respect, respect, you've been asked this a couple of times. So just if you could address it clearly. Children who were born here, parents who are here illegally, should they be deported? I well, I've talked about how, going forward, I believe we should change the rules, the law, uh, but I think in terms of uh, deporting, the best thing we can do is enforce the law. We enforce the law and require employers across America to uphold the law, which means an effective e-verify system. Uh, I think that uh, uh, that ultimately puts us in a good place. But you're still, you're still not yeah. addressing it, though. You may say you don't want to address it, but should children who are here, born and are currently citizens, the current law would be they can stay. Well, I've said in terms of what we should do uh, is enforce the law. Governor, 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 thank you guys. I want to shake your hand. I need to. The next too. president of the United States. Thank you. Yes. Working hard for it. Yes. You had to work hard this morning. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I just showed people <laughs> wondering if I had any fight in me. We showed yes. that, that, uh, Real that lives have been affected by your policies. You're right. But the point you said that, that public employees, including me, you said your parents had to pay something for health insurance and for pensions. The vast majority of the, and people in my state and your state pay more than what I'm asking the public employees. Most people are paid 20, 25 percent of their health insurance. I ask for a mere 12.8 percent. Most people pay for more than half of their retirement. All I asked public employees was to pay for half. So what I did actually put public employees on par with where even better than where most people are in the state of Wisconsin. You are my number one oh. man. Thank you. Donald Trump is not. Well, I appreciate your support. Thank you. We're going to get her done. We are going to yeah. get it done. Yeah. And I'm going to be on your campaign. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your service. I appreciate your support and I appreciate your service. He is with the cut across we call the uh, light curtain. Yeah. No, I'm far enough. So we doing on this one or you no, want to join that? No, you flip over there on the burgers and wine. I used to put burgers on at uh, McDonald's? McDonald's, yeah, as a kid. In fact, we used to have to crack them sometimes, they were so frozen. You'd, you'd take them and bang them like that.
So you used to work at McDonald's? Mm -hmm. Paid off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it's sometime in life, huh? Right to the bone. Okay, you're supposed to try this one. <laughs> well, that's right. Yeah, here. That's good. Great job up there as governor. Thank you. You uh, held on. The uh, unions uh, were uh, trying to get rid of you. You stood up for the state, saved taxpayers money. Absolutely. I wish you well, sir. Absolutely. We're going to do it for America. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. This is what you call bringing Iowa and Wisconsin together. It's like a Reese's peanut butter cup. They go great together. Pork and a line of Google. You know, I started out as a secretary in a nine-person real estate firm. My husband, Frank, started out driving a tow truck. Is there staying power in the movement of the outsider candidate that you represent and Dr. Carson represents and Donald Trump represents? Well, I think there is staying power, and the reason I say that is because if you look at polling data, what you'll find is 75% of the American people now think the federal government is corrupt. That's a huge number. 82% of the American people now think we have a professional political class that is more focused on protecting its own power, privilege, and position than on getting any work done. Welcome to the corn stand. This is so cool. And then bring it to the water. It makes it hydrate, okay? So all those sugars come to the top. Then we stick it on a grill, and we grill it so it has, so it has that smoky flavor and then that kind See, of I'm, sweet. See, I'm, I'm trying to remember this. When I go home, I could do this, oh, okay. right? Oh, okay. You put really it on the grill. Put it on, and, 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 okay. and, then, and then you cut it. Off the cob, and then we put butter on it, and we have two different kinds of sausage. We have the chorizo, or we have the pork, and the yeah. pork is for uh, the Iowa. The Iowa. Okay, well, I want. I think I gotta try the Iowa. Look at all these people trying to eat. Uh, you're gonna be famous. <laughs> wow, this is fantastic. I hope you win the Thank you so much. We know tomorrow. The prize. Mm. I hope you do too. My granddaughter um, goes to Iowa State, uh -huh. and my question is for you is, what are you going to do to target the younger generation that we have coming up? Because a lot of them, I find it out, are very, very liberal. <laughs> See them all? They're all here. They're all here. But, yeah, and she, she works for the newspaper there at Iowa State. Yeah, we got to go. We got to go where they are. We got to use the mediums they use. We got to take those who are excited about my candidacy, and these folks drove three hours to come here and right. hear me. We got to use them and list them to help, and what can which she I will. Do? What can she do? She'll sign up you? and help us. I'm just so excited about all the ideas that you have. Well, thank thing. you. Well, thank you. I hope you'll like me. We lived in California for seven and a half years. So you know. I do know. You know. I mean, it, we're just politicians are destroying. Well, I run the ethanol plant here in uh, Coon Rapids. It's about an hour from uh, Des Moines. And so we, we're very focused on renewable fuel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I think he's tapping into frustration. I get that. But what's going to change is when I talk about how to fix immigration and you can't do it without democratic support, a workable solution for the 11 million, what's going to sink Mr. Trump over time, I believe, is solutions to problems that are real, like dealing with ISIL. I've never heard a military commander suggest that we go back to Iraq and take the oil away from the Iraqi people. He is not embracing a rational solution to destroying ISIL. He's talking gibberish on foreign policy and absolutely demagoguery on immigration. And over time, this will matter. Don't get any better. <laughs> if I get to be the nominee of our party, we're going to come here alive. We're going to talk about solving problems that are hard. We're going to fix immigration, not yell about it. And we're going to take the fight to ISIL before they come here. Well, I've done my part since I've been in Iowa. I've been eating bacon and pork for three days. <laughs> so are y'all pork people? Okay. Uh, some of them are in the pork industry. Okay. I mean, there are some pork producers that are here. Well, this is radical Islam's worst nightmare. <laughs> well, they say this is one of the top ten things you should do before you die, is come to the Iowa State Fair. And eat pork. Well, if you stayed here ten days, it'd be the last thing you did before you died. <laughs>
I can't imagine doing this for 10 days. Yeah. You're uh, a hardy you lot. You got a couple here. days off. You can't do it 10 yeah. days. It'll no, you got to. How do you get in shape to do this? Too hard. Do you like, you go out and train? The end of a perfect day, a pork chop on a stick. This is the pathway to the White House. You can't be commander in chief unless you need a pork chop on a stick. You earned it. You earned it. You did it. Good job today. Right, well. I bet you're fine hanging out. You've received several phone calls. Y'all are great. Y'all yeah. been there. We got a good little team here. <laughs>
Okay, you want to walk around a little bit? Yeah, we should uh, let the people, you see what Iowa's all about. You, I, except we're a better state than Ohio, but except for that, uh, we're pretty much the same. Thank you. <laughs> you don't think I'm taking the bait. That's like no. asking me what I think of Trump. When are you welcome? You have to. A lot of these bureaucrats back to the services, so there's accountability, line yeah. accountability. Sure. Sure. How are you? Yeah, hi. How are you? Do you want to walk over this way so you can see more people? Well, whatever you think we ought to do. Yeah. I think you'll see more people if you walk on the sidewalk. My wife died three years ago in March. We took away all my spousal benefits. And they want me to pay it all back. No use is the Grassley issue. Well, I know, but, but it goes beyond local. It goes, it, it, it's all about well, I know, what's but going on. the United States Senate. I know, but you're going to hopefully be the president. Yeah. And so, if you're going to be the president, what, you know. If, if you got a, if you got my staff with you, uh, right Congressman right. Young is working with me. Oh, yeah, let's get out of the rain. People think we're crazy. So I want to be in contact. Okay. And you can talk to me in the, on the phone anytime between now and, and what, yeah. Yeah. January 20th. And if there's too so much that needs to be done, yeah. we got to do it quick. We can't yeah. screw around with it. Yeah. If nothing gets done by, if it doesn't get done by Labor Day, forget about it for the next three years. Thanks. Take care of your wife. Well, I, I mean, I've been listening to people all over the country. Look, they're frustrated. They want to make sure that they have a job that they can keep, and if they lose it, they can get another one that can pay them a good chunk of money. They want their kids who've rung up college debts to be able to get a job. I've always wanted a mustache, but I can't really grow one, so how's that look? That's good. Okay. <laughs> how's that look? You've gotten a chance to um, take a look at Donald Trump's immigration plan that he released? No, I, I haven't. I probably won't. Well, what do you make I have of... my own plan. <laughs> okay, but what do you make but of... But I, I have my own plan, so I don't talk about their plans. My plan is to finish the fence and make it clear to people that once that fence is done, if you sneak in, we're sending you back. No more debate about it. Have a robust go cash worker program so people can come in and go back. And the 11 or 12 million that are here, if they haven't committed a crime, then they pay a penalty and they take some time and then they can uh, they can be, uh, reach a, a legal status and that's what I favor. So all the other things, that, that to me is the heart of it and I think that is what can pass in the Congress. Are you kidding me? Really good. Listen, you're going to hear a lot of people stand on this stage and they're going to tell you a lot of good things. But all too often, it's just rhetoric. It's time for a president of the United States that actually has a record. This is going to be a show me, don't tell me election. You pick what you want. You want Washington making those decisions, or do you want the people of Iowa making those decisions? I'm going to stand with the people of Iowa every time. Thanks for coming to Iowa, Governor. And my, thank you. And my cousins live in Texas, and they love you, Governor. Why don't we go out here and we'll take Can I talk to you? I'm from Texas. Street? Can I ask you a question? You won't, you, won't, you won't answer your own constituents' questions? We do. Well, I'm not Let's the governor of Texas.
Well, I know, but you can. You do a lot of things in Texas. But you're gonna be. You're going for president. Washington's broken, and we're mad as hell at Washington. Some of us have been fighting Washington for a long time, with success, I might add. So having a uh, a president of the United States. Donald Trump has been hammering it. It is now, whether anyone likes it or not, part of the debate amongst the Persians and So, let's, so, where, where do you so let's, let's have the debate. How long has it been since we changed the Constitution of the United States? Back well, in the early 1990s. And it took 202 years to get that 27th Amendment put into our, our Constitution. I land on securing the border. I know how to do it. I've been dealing with it for the 14 years that I was the governor of the state of Texas. And if Americans are looking for somebody that will find solutions to the challenges that face us, I'm their guy. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to do it. There we go. Can I get you to vote in our, our straw poll today? Oh, yeah. All righty. All we're going to do is touch that screen. You'll go up to that vote icon on the left. Right here. Right here. Right here. And uh, touch the screen occasionally until Man, you find your candidate. That's a uh, that's a lot of. Did you get it? Great. Uh, and would you like to see the results? Which sure. You bet. Cool. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. We're getting along here. That's awesome. Perfect. All right. Very good, sir. Thank you. And I'm just curious. Has it been frustrating to you that so many reporters have been asking you about whether you're planning on dropping out? No. no. Not at all. My, uh, <laughs> I dated my wife for 16 years, so I asked her to get married off. The good answer is we're going to be here a lot, so uh, we're not going anywhere. Well, we're going a lot of places, but we're not going anywhere. <laughs> All right, so you're not even close to being done. Yeah. All right, good. Thank you, Thank you very much. 2,893 pounds. It's a big one. Big pockets for you. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you. We'll be back. I'll be there. Okay. Oh, that's a lot of that's a lot of bull right there. That is a lot of bull. <laughs> that's a lot of bull. Yes, it is. Here we go. We're not going to go to the Cattlemen's Association booth. Speak honestly and candidly about the challenges we face, right. whether it's the assault on marriage, and we have the Supreme Court and the radical left trying to forcibly redefine marriage and, and to tear down what has been a fundamental building block of our society from time immemorial. You were asked about the anchor baby term on the radio. You turned it into sort of a media thing. But you personally, do you find anything objectionable about that term? Was Governor Bush wrong to use it? Was he right to use it? Have you used it in the past? You know, I, I think we need to stop this politically correct nonsense. We need to speak candidly about the problems facing this country. When it comes to illegal immigration, I'm glad the media has suddenly discovered we have a problem with illegal immigration. Uh, you know, there is no doubt that the best way to secure the border is boots on the ground. So when you spend time on the border, and obviously representing Texas, I spent a lot of time visiting with law enforcement, visiting with Border Patrol, and the consistent answer is boots on the ground are the most effective tool. So now the democratic field consists of a wild-eyed socialist with ideas that are dangerous for America and the world and Bernie Sanders. You should go take him out. <laughs> Senator. Uh, you and I, I'm going to try to visit visit with, with voters instead because we, we've done a media avail. Are you, you in school? Uh, yeah, I am. High school. I'm going to be a sophomore this year. Well, terrific. How's the state fair been so far? It's been great. Good. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming out. This guy's awesome. Really to see, isn't <laughs> thank you, man. And more than anything, what I've tried to do in office is tell the truth and do what I said I would do. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing some debate. I bet you it'd, it'd, be, it'd make me happy if I started tossing pork yeah, over, over oh, my yeah. shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Hot. from the state. Yeah. Yeah. I have a pork chop. Good. He's a good man. Yeah, he's cool.
worth eating. Right? That's fabulous. Yeah. I think religious freedom is so important. It's so crucial for all religions. LGBT people are worried that they will directly be discriminated against because of the bill. And, you know. We don't have a right to force anyone to abandon their faith. Tonight at the rally, we're going to have people from all over the country who have lived according to their faith and have been persecuted for it. And, and, and it is one of the foundational commitments of who we are as Americans to respect diversity, to, to respect the right of every American to live according to his or her conscience, his or her faith. Sure, but for example, still in a lot of states, LGBT people can be fired for just being gay or for just being trans. Um, that's totally legal. I mean, how do you feel about that? That just doesn't sound very American to me. You know, at the end of the day, what we should not be doing is persecuting people who follow their faith. Like, I'll give an example, one of the, one of the couples that's going to be featured tonight. Hey, Robert, what about your question about LGBT people being fired for just strictly being gay or trans? Well, what we're seeing right now is, is actually, we're seeing Bible-believing Christians being persecuted. Imagine, hypothetically, you had a gay florist, and imagine that two evangelical Christians wanted to get married, and the gay florist decided, you know what, I disagree with your faith. I don't want to provide flowers. I would say, that, I would say they should provide the flowers. Just and like, and, and just I would like say gay the gay florist has every right married. to say, if I disagree with your faith and don't want to participate, I'm, and you know what, there are lots of other people you can buy flowers from. Just, they must yeah, be I driven out of business. more tolerance for LGBT people who have constantly been persecuted in this country. It used to be illegal. They were thrown in jail. And uh, and we've come a really, really long way. Who's been thrown in jail? Gay people used to be thrown in jail. Some of your rivals are trying to figure out how to run against Donald Trump. You seem to be running with him. I, I am a big fan of Donald Trump, and, and I think it it is a mistake for other Republicans to try to take a stick to Donald Trump and whack him. And ironically, I think it, it, it has proven counterproductive. You know, the, the Washington establishment doesn't understand that when they attack Donald Trump, he goes up in the polls. Because people are so fed up with the Washington establishment. You know, if they really wanted to hurt Donald Trump, they could embrace him and say that he's their best friend. That would be a very damaging thing to do. <laughs> that seems like what you're doing. At one point, though, six months from now or so, it could be you and Donald Trump head to head. What are your differences with him? You know, you know there will be a time for that conversation. Now is not that time. So, but it was a good try. So you have a big rally tonight? Uh, we have a fantastic rally planned tonight. torture and kill this out. This is a question about hog crates. And uh, oh, here we go. Well, let me be, uh, let me be really clear about that. I have to tell you the truth, when something like that happens, and I'm here in Iowa, man, I feel right at home. I mean, come on. Two, two women jump up on stage, and, you know, like, I mean, I didn't even flinch. So, it's, you know, this is old news for me. So, no, it's like, that's fine. And, and, and you know, from, from my perspective, that shows they care. And, you know, if, I wasn't, if it wasn't meaningful, nobody would jump up on the stage and try to interrupt me, so I feel pretty good. Been really pleased about the reception you've gotten from everybody. I mean, you've seen it. Uh, you know, I think we've got an incredible reception here, and, and uh, 
glad Mary Pat and the kids are here to see it so they get an idea of what I do when I leave. These 14 pigs born on the first day of the fair, August 13th, so you see this protects them from being crushed by this big sow. That's the whole reason for it. Yeah. So they might have 14 or... Um, is this a previously an actual birth? Yeah. Five pounds of birth. Yeah. We want to see the poultry industry come back here. So. Well, thank you very much. Oh, nice handshake. Okay, that says you. a lot right there. Good 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 good. Thank you. <laughs>a tumultuous summer would have political casualties. Governors Walker and Perry would both be out of the Republican presidential race within weeks of the Iowa State Fair. Ted Cruz would begin a slow and steady path to the top tier. The summer of Trump would continue into the fall and the final push for the presidency in Iowa.